So in this lecture, we will take more examples for the shift reduce parsing. Let's say the grammar rules are s produces s plus s, s produces s minus s, s produces under bracket s, and then s produces id. And uh, the input string that we have is a minus under parenthesis b plus c parenthesis close, and obviously the last symbol has to be dollar. So now uh, we are going to see the, the uh, shift reduce parsing, and a dollar is there on the stack as the, as the stack top. The very first thing that we see in the input string is A and what action should be taken on A? It is obvious that we will be pushing that symbol A on the stack. Now, uh, if you push the symbol A on the stack, in the string we remain with minus under parenthesis B plus C and obviously the dollar. What is the next action that we need to do? According to the grammar rule, the grammar rule 4 says that S produces ID. So we end on the stack, we have A symbol that is an identifier. This can be reduced by the left hand side. So S produces ID is the production symbol. ID is there on the stack. We can reduce this by left hand side of the production rule that is S. Now we have the next symbol minus. What should we do with the minus? Obviously the minus will be pushed on the stack. So what we are saying that we are shifting the minus symbol on the stack. Shift the minus symbol on the stack, the stack, which that is. Already there was this S already, we have pushed the minus symbol on the stack. Now on the in this string, we remain with B plus C and then a dollar. We have an opening parenthesis. What we can do with the opening parenthesis, we can move without that on the stack. So shift opening parenthesis on the stack. If you push that uh, symbol on the stack, we have the symbols, the symbols on the stack. In the string we have B plus C, bracket close, and a dot. So now we have B symbol in the input string, we will push that symbol on the stack. So we will shift the B symbol on the stack. There is a dollar as minus opening parenthesis and we are pushing the B on the stack. Fine. So in this thing we remain with plus C bracket close and dollar. Now on the stack top we have small b. What we can do with this small b? We can reduce it by the left hand side of the production that is S produces ID. So B can be replaced by capital S dollar S minus opening parenthesis S. Fine. Now we see the symbol plus in the input string. So what should we do with the plus? We should shift that plus on the stack. We already have these symbols on the stack. We just start pushing plus also on the stack. Input a string contains C closing parenthesis and dollar now. We have a C in the input that can be shifted on the stack. So input the stack already has these symbols. The C is pushed on the stack. So C is an identifier, so that can be reduced by the grammar rule 4 that says that this symbol should be converted to the left hand side of the production that is S. So C can be converted to S. After doing so, <coughs> you can see that in the top of the stack we have S plus S. So grammar rule 1 says, this grammar rule 1 says S produces S plus S. So S plus S is appearing at the top of the stack that can be reduced by the left hand side. So we can reduce by S produces S plus S. Right? So this uh, S plus S can be converted to capital S. Closing a dollar is appearing as the input symbol. It's there here also. Now we have a closing parenthesis, so that can be shifted on the stack. Shift. 
it doesn't matter. Okay. Yeah. This is the this is the condition. And the input is to get remaining with only the column. <clears throat> now on the top of the stack we have s minus under bracket s. So only if we consider only under bracket s or under parenthesis s, there is a production rule three, which says that if we have a right if we have uh, under bracket s that can be converted to s. Okay. So now we have to use the grammar rule s produces. And the stack now contains S. Yes. Okay. Now S minus S is the right hand side of the production rule 2. So we can use the production rule 2 to reduce the S minus S appearing on the stack to S. Now we have the stack with the entire symbol uh, if that is a string has now been converted to the start symbol since we are we have been able to do that we will say that our grammar is correct according to the graph fine so if we are able to do that we will say that we have been able to uh, convert the string to the start symbol and the string is according to the grammar rule let's take another example So let's say the grammar rules are E produces 2 E and then E produces 3 E E produces 4. Input string is 3, 2, 4, 2, 3. We just have to just find out if this is written according to the rules or not. So we'll apply a dollar also in the end. Right? The stack will contain a dollar in the beginning. Let's number these rules 1, 2, and 3. So these are the grammar rules, and uh, these grammar rules are numbered 1, 2, 3, just for the sake of our convenience. So we have a 3. What should we do with 3? What should we do with the 3? Uh, can we shift 3? Can we shift 3 on the stack? Obviously, we can shift 3 on the stack. So let us shift this 3 on the stack. Now we remain with 2, 4, 2, 3, and a dollar in the input string. Fine. So now we have 2. What we can do to, with the 2? In the grammar rule does not say that we can do anything with the 3. Okay, unless we have something like 3 e3, nothing can be done with the 3. So we have only 2 and uh, we will shift this 2 on the stack. So now stack will contain e and 3. Once again, nothing can be done with this 2. Okay, the grammar rule does not suggest that to do anything with this 2. So we will shift this 4. Which is appearing as a first symbol in the input is going to be stack. Stack already had 3, 2, we have inverted 4 also. We have pushed 4 also. Okay. So the string contains now 3 symbols. What should we do with the 4? This 4 is the top of the stack. There is a production rule E produces 4. So we can reduce this 4 to the left hand side of the production symbol. E produces 4. So now the stack contains 3, 2, and 4 has been converted to E. Fine. Now we have 2 on the, as the input string, input string symbol. So what we'll do this with this 2? We'll shift this 2 on the stack. We can see that. Now we can see that uh, uh, on the top of the stack we have 3, 2, uh, sorry, uh, on, uh, in the stack we have 3, 2, E2. 
So if you see 2e2, so there is a grammar rule one says that e produces 2e2. So we can convert this 2e2 to e. That is the left hand side of the symbol. So we are reducing the production rule one reduced by e produces 2e2. So the left hand side of the symbol can be converted or that can be converted entirely to now we have three on the uh, in the input string, so that three can be pushed on this side. So we are doing this shift three. So dollar three e and then three. Dollar three. In this string, we have only dollar. Now, if you see the top of the stack, we have 3e3. 3e3 three three. Three e is uh, actually uh, can be replaced by the production rule 2. So, we are using the production rule e produces 3e3. Three e three. Okay, so we'll start entirely 3e3 three e three is now being converted to. Symbol e, which is the start symbol. And then for the string, we have dollar, and hence the string is separate. We have converted the symbols, uh, we have converted the input string to the start symbol.